this is uh, actually in our applications lab here. Um, so I'll go ahead and you know walk you through um, the different features of the Drive App system. On the left, you'll see that uh, four control knobs. Each of those knobs um, operates a different setting for the uh, for the Drive App system. Each of the stations can be operated independently. So you can be running a different program of each of those stations at the same time. The top knob is your drive volume. Um, that will um, go ahead and tell when these uh, valves in the front here, where your dry discs sit, to remove your water from your sample, how long to actually pull a vacuum on, your, uh, on each individual station. The next down is the heater power. Most customers will leave that on heater power 5. Um, that's 60 watts of power delivered to each of the station, each stations. Um, next down is a heater timer. You can actually um, go ahead and time how long you want to have the heat on. All right, now we're just going to take a closer look at uh, one of the individual stations. Um, if you take a look at the station itself or the heater um, assembly itself, which is right here, um, you'll notice that uh, there's a, um, a sheen to some of it, the mostly. Um, iridescent colors so you see some different purples and greens and stuff that's all coated with uh, res tech material um, it's a sulfur inert material it keeps everything from uh, any kind of analyzer from actually sticking to your uh, surface so any analyzer are actually not in contact with the steel here but they're actually in contact with that sulfur inert material it's the same uh, kind of coating that you'll see in your GC inlets uh, and the like as I was just describing um, the different parts here. Um, if you take a look inside here, there's a, actually a rinse tube. Um, the inside of this uh, lid here is hemispherical, so when this rinse rod here, which has got a, a J-shape hook to it, um, actually sprays onto the top here, it, it has a good coating action of the, the glass here itself. So this uh, actually just lowers right down into the glass, um, and a suction or vacuum is formed onto that uh, concentrator tube right here. So just pulling that back up. This heater assembly here, um, there's a thermocouple right here between the uh, coils and the actual straight part of the heater. Um, this tells the heater when to shut off. When that solvent has reached the thermocouple, it will automatically shut off um, so you don't have a direct heat um, to your analytes. The next part here is your sparge tube uh, from your dry disc, which is located right here. Your sample is poured into your dry disc, um, and actually a suction is pulled onto onto the assembly here, which runs down um, through your sparge tube and is introduced right into your um, concentrator tube. This is the dry disc assembly. Um, there are three parts to this. I'll go ahead and I'll take this apart for you here. This is uh, the lower part. Um, actually supports the dry disc itself. And here's your glass where your sample goes in and a retaining uh, nut to go ahead and screw the whole assembly down. This is a dry disc. I'll go see, see if I can get it out of here. So this is what your dry disc looks like. This is a hydrophobic membrane. It's basically Gore-Tex. It um, has a physical separation of your water um, from your solvents. So your sample will pass through this. Um, it has a uh, infinite capacity for water, so you know as much water as you have in there, it'll it, it take out. These dry discs are um, reusable. Typically, uh, customers will do is just uh, do a quick wash of the dry disc itself with uh, some methylene chloride. Uh, generally speaking, they can get about uh, three or four uses out of uh, one of these dry discs. This is your concentrator too. Let's see if I can get it in better focus for you. Um, it actually has two markings down here at the bottom. One is for half a mil. The one up here is for uh, one mil. Um, half a mil is just an indicator. Um, this piece of glassware right here will shut off automatically at uh, one mil. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and run a sample here. Um, give you a quick look at the sample. Um, this is about uh, 200 mils here of uh, methylene chloride. Um, and then also some uh, water in there. So I've gone ahead and added some dye to the water just so, so you can see it um, as it gets trapped by the dry disc. So now I'm gonna go ahead and run the sample. Um, so I'm gonna come in here with the concentrator tube, actually place the concentrator tube um, under the heater. 
When I place this down, there's actually a switch inside of the cradle that supports the tube. Um, so you'll look up here and now you'll see the ready light is on the station, but it's not on the rest of the stations. I mean, that's a safety feature, so you, um, you can't turn the heater on without the tube in place. As I mentioned before, um, these are the settings for each individual station that you can set. Um, I've set this uh, on a dry volume of 200 mils, um, and that's a time-based event, and it pulls a vacuum through the dry disc here for about three, uh, three and a half minutes or so. Um, the next step down is the heater power. Um, generally speaking, we leave that on five, which is 60 watts. Um, the heater is always going to go the boiling point of that solvent. So changing the heat power is only going to, um, say, affect how long it takes to get to the boiling point of that sample. The heater timer, um, we're going to leave this all automatic, so we're going to leave the heater timer off. And we're going to go ahead and leave the auto rinse mode off. I'm going to go ahead and pour the sample into the dry disc assembly in the front. Like I said, this is about uh, 180, 200 mils of methylene chloride with water. And so the red, you'll see there, is the water. Okay, now with the sample in the dry disc uh, container and with everything set up, I'm going to go ahead and hit the, the start button here on the station. Once I do that, I'm going to check to make sure I have a good vacuum seal here, which now I do. And you'll see here that the sample is starting to be pulled into the concentrator tube, while the sample here is starting to be um, drawn down through your dry disc. I'm just going to do a few rinses here of the collection vessel and knock down any water that might remain. I usually am pretty generous here with the rinses. And I'll pour that in. Now you'll see we're approaching um, the end here. You can see the, the water has remained on top of the dry disc. Looking at the control panel here for the individual station, you'll see that we are still in dry mode and the vacuum is on. With the vacuum still pulling, I'm going to come here with a rinse bottle of uh, DCM and I'm going to actually knock down the, the water here and just rinse the inside of the disc holder to make sure that all the analytes are carried along through the dry disc into the concentrator tube. And I'll just do a little swirl here, make sure all the DCM passes over to the concentrator tube. And now all we are left with here is uh, your water. At the beginning of the, uh, the demonstration here, I went ahead and started the, uh, the timer. So now we're at about a, uh, three minutes and 45 seconds. Now the heat just started, it's 4 minutes and 12 seconds. You see a pretty vigorous uh, heat here. I'm going to go ahead and remove the dry disc so you can see what's happening. Um, the water is going to stay on top. I'm just going to move this to the side. And we'll take a closer look here at the tube. You can see some boiling already starting to occur around the heater. And then the jet of air that you see there is nitrogen sparge. We don't have a vacuum being pulled through the dry disc. There's heat being applied to the sample. Uh, samples continues uh, to be under vacuum. You're at about minus 12 inches of mercury. And the sparge gas is on, so you have nitrogen being applied to the sample. This is a dry disc that was disused. I went ahead and I cleaned this with some uh, DCM. And uh, like I said, you can get about uh, three or four uses out of this um, before uh, switching over to a new one. This is a progress after about uh, 15 minutes or so. At the top here, um, maybe a little hard to see, um, but you can start to see some condensation going on right here. Um, so the DCM is actually going up here, hitting this cold glass and uh, um, actually washing down the sides of your glass, uh, pulling all your analytes down. So in that respect, it works a lot like a, a KD. Taking a little look inside the cradle, this is actually what supports the, um, the glassware there. Um, 
inside here, just point a couple things out. This is the switch that um, actually triggers the mechanism for the heater to come on and off, um, the safety mechanism. And then to the sides there, you can kind of see um, a little IR sensor. Um, there's one on either side, and that's what um, re looks through the glassware and sees the meniscus. With the dry disc, you can totally replace the need for sodium sulfate, um, so you don't have to worry about you know drying your sodium sulfate or uh, you know, keeping it in a uh, moisture-free environment. With the dry disc, um, you just like I said, you just put them on the dry disc assembly. Go ahead and run that. Um, you get multiple uses out of these dry discs, um, and they have an infinite capacity for water, so there's no need to you know. You know, worry about how much uh, sodium sulfate am I going to put in this sample because it has X amount of water. With this, um, it will take as much water out of your sample um, as it is in your sample. So now we're at uh, right around 29 minutes and we're getting close to heater shut off. Um, the heater is going to shut off right above, um, or the heater is going to shut off when the solvent is right above it. Um, so we're getting pretty close now. So now you need to see the heater shut off, um, and there's just, it's hard to see, but there's just uh, maybe a penny's uh, thickness of uh, solvent right above that, uh, right above that heater. This might show you a better uh, angle of what I was uh, talking about a second ago. Um, so at this point, um, you look up onto the settings, or at vacuum and sparge. So we'll look back down. You can see um, the sparge tube pointing into the solvent there. Um, it's very hard to see, but there's a little dimple of nitrogen gas being blown right onto the sample. Now you can see that um, the heater is almost completely exposed. You have some nitrogen sparge going on, and uh, we're at about 35 minutes right now. So this will continue um, probably for the next uh, 15 minutes or so. So that beeping sound you hear, you can turn that up, down, or off, um, depending on uh, your preferences. Go ahead and stop that. I'll just go up here and hit the stop button. And the beeping will stop, and now you'll notice you're in the ready state. Here the sample is uh, ready to go. I'll just go ahead and lift the head here. And I'll pull out the glass, and we can see that you're right at the one mil mark. At uh, one mil mark is... Uh, plus or minus, uh, it's calibrated plus or minus 20 microliters. Right now we're going to go ahead and walk through a hexane exchange on how I would do that. Um, you'll see here I put the dry disc back in place with the water that was on the dry disc. So I, I would leave that in place um, and then I'll go ahead and set up for a exchange into hexane. So what I'll do from here is go ahead and add about uh, maybe 50 mils of hexane and I'll introduce it right into the dry disc and what this does is it cleans uh, any, sorry I have a slight leak there, any kind of uh, analytes that may still be in the glass, um, so you're doing an extra rinse there, um, and then any analytes that may still be in your water, um, it actually pulls those out as well, um, so this, this works very well. That should be pretty good. Go ahead and lower down the head, and hit start now. We're going to start pulling a vacuum through here. So your hexane is being pulled into the concentrator tube. Just like the methylene chloride, as the hexane starts to be pulled through completely, I'll just give the dry disc holder a quick uh, swirl here, making sure that all the hexane has passed through, so you're still left with water. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and just stop the drying process. And um, because uh, methylene chloride is uh, very dense, uh, what I do from here is take a pipette and actually manually mix the, um, the hexane and the methylene chloride. I'm going to come over here with the pipette and just suck up that bottom fraction and then disperse it across the top with the pipette about three times. And that ensures that you get a good mix of your hexane and your methylene chloride. After I've mixed with the pipette, I want to go back. Um, you want to leave your heater power on five, but now you don't want to pull any more volume of sample through the dry disc, so I'll go ahead and turn that to off, turn that to start, and you can skip the drying process and go straight into heat, vacuum, and sparge. All right, now we're at uh, around five minutes here. 
Um, and we're getting pretty close to shut off here. The hexane will evaporate uh, quite a bit faster than the methylene chloride. Um, so you'll see that shut off here in a second. So these are four samples of pHs that are being run. These are uh, actual samples. Um, and there's about uh, 50 mils of hexane um, in the dry disc holders right now. And those are being pulled through. Um, so all four stations are running right now. So this is our uh, sample right here of our hexane exchange. Um, and right now we're at about 15 minutes. Um, and we're getting pretty close to the end point. Now we've uh, finished here with our hexane uh, exchange uh, and we're at about uh, 16 minutes, almost 17 minutes here with that run. So these are the uh, four uh, sample, the pH samples that are being run right now. This is our final sample um, that we just ran. Um, so this is one mil of, uh, of hexane. This is a sample from here. I would go ahead and transfer this out uh, into a GC vial um, using a uh, Pasteur pipette. From here, uh, what I'm going to show you is a uh, concentration down to uh, around 5 to 6 mils. What I've done is actually put a piece of aluminum foil around the uh, top of the uh, tip of the concentrator tube. And what this does is blocks the uh, IR sensor and uh, defeats it. Um, so the um, heater will actually shut off um, and then the IR sensor will be immediately tripped and it will go into a finished state. Now we're about to have a, uh, the shut off with hexane. And now we have just a slight covering of hexane over the heater um, and that final volume is going to be right around 5 mils. You had indicated that you want to go down to a volume of 10 mils. And I'm going to show you how you can go down to um, basically any volume you want to. I have about uh, 50 mils of DCM uh, in the concentrator tube. What I'm going to do now is change the uh, control panel to a setting where the dry volume is off, the heater power is on 5. I'm going to set the heater timer to actually uh, the setting of one and that is five minutes. Now after five minutes of heat, um, just went ahead and then stopped. Uh, it looks like the endpoint is about 10 mils right there. Um, depending on what volume you'll have, you'll have to adjust the heater timer um, accordingly. For cleaning in between samples, um, all that I typically do is go in with uh, a little squirt of some methylene chloride and I'll squirt down the heater. Sean, that concludes our demonstration. Uh, just to reiterate the features of the drive app, you do have your dry, da dry disk system in the front, um, inline drying system. It automatically takes your uh, sample through the dry disk into your concentrator tube uh, automatically and then switches over uh, into the heat mode and then finally down into the sparge mode. You automatically go to your final endpoint, typically one mil. Uh, you have uh, independent controls over here on the left hand side so you can uh, operate each of these systems uh, independently uh, of each other. Cleaning of the system is very easy. You also have all of your um, all of your metal uh, throughout the system. Um, also under the, the lid itself are coated with sulfur inert material protecting all of those metal surfaces um, keeping those from coming in contact with your uh, sample itself. Another nice feature that I may have not mentioned was the um, cradle. Um, you have your IR sensors in here. If you ever have a problem with one of these IR sensors, um, your sample will shut off at the uh, right above the heater. So you will not ever have a sample that will go to complete dryness. Um, so your sample will always be saved um, and not uh, go to complete dryness.